very best Like no trade was ever lost Ordering is our real test And Lambo is our car We will surf across the web Trading short and long He's talking to understand The technology involved never sell guys it's k-dub here with another episode of crypto zombie as you guys know i wasn't around yesterday i decided to take some of my own advice and just take the day off go out breathe in the fresh air go do something that being said it is father's day and i wanted to say happy father's day to all the crypto dads out there really all the dads in general not just crypto dads so you know what guys if you want to turn the video off and come back later perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with spending time with family perfectly understandable you need to do these things, okay? You gotta kinda take your face away from the portfolio app, right? So that being said, I wanna say shout out to everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting, and of course, everybody that continuously supports the channel. I love you guys, you're awesome. I love reading your comments. Everyone that's been joining the Telegram chat, it's a really great community, and it's an honor to be going through this journey with all of you. That being said, let's have a look at the markets, which are underwhelming as usual, so we're not gonna bore you with this. We're seeing Bitcoin kinda sit around that. 40% dominance. We are seeing Dragon Chain, Decentraland, V Chain doing well. Binance Coin, I've spoken about these exchange tokens, these exchange coins. I think they're going to do very well. They have real utility. You use them for trading fees, you use them for referral codes, etc. So I just wanted to point that out. Also, I do notice that Mithril is up here. I have to say, I've been using Mithril for quite some time. If you guys want, you can find me on Mithril. I'm K-Dub the Crypto Zombie. You can just search me. But I have to say that they, they have fixed it because in the beginning, I was really kind of upset with how buggy it was. It had difficulty connecting. They had no filters. There was just all these features that were just totally lacking in comparison to things like Snapchat or Instagram. And when we were talking about these blockchain projects having real world use cases or providing real value, this is exactly what I wanted to see. So I don't know if the price is a reflection of the fact that the app itself got better. I'm not too sure, but it is a lot better, guys. So if you haven't, if you haven't downloaded the Lit app yet, it definitely has been extremely improved since I first started. You have Redcoin pumping. I'm not sure why. Nano, very, very, very interesting with Nano. You know, Nano essentially is the perfect cryptocurrency, really, in a sense, when you think about it, right? Completely feeless, instant. So it's really interesting to see what's gonna develop out of the Nano Camp. That, that, is a, that is a coin that I've definitely just kept my eyes on for a while. So I wanted to talk about the topic of conversation that everyone kind of talks about, and it was this article, Opinion. The Mad World of ICOs. Very long article, okay? I'm gonna leave this in the description because this is essentially what inspired me to sort of talk about what I was gonna talk about today. I decided to kind of take a step back from news and I wanted to discuss ICOs because ICOs are getting insane lately. There are so many of them coming out. There's so many projects. And the thing is, is I, I have a natural inclination to be interested. I'm a curious individual, so I want to look at these projects. But I got to be honest with you. There's so many of them that are doing the exact same thing. And, you know, a third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation. We're not even allowing the, the originals to do their job. You know, everybody just look at what happened with Neo. Everybody just kind of forgot about it, right? We're going to move on to, to, to the next chain. We're going to go get Quark chain or we're going to get this other chain, right? But the thing is, is we don't even really have the, 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 the projects that are out there now being utilized to full capacity and full potential, even with EOS having the year-long ICO. So let me just step back a bit because I will start rambling. Let's have a look. Let's talk about what other people are saying. So you see Business Insider saying the crypto boom is like the dot-com bubble, but that's not a bad thing. Selling crypto now is like selling Apple in 2001. I think you know where they're going with this. But I think the key is not just all cryptocurrencies. Let's be honest, guys. A lot of these projects are going to fail. You, you know it. You know it and I know it. So I think what we need to focus on moving forward, especially in these types of markets, is 
sure, you can focus on the quick flips if you want, okay? There, there, there's always those opportunities, but I really think the long-term value is where, if you're if you're planning on being in this uh, game long-term, you have to focus on that long-term value. So I wanted to kind of go into some of the key takeaways from this. So Joseph Lu uh, Lubin, he's a co-founder of Ethereum. He said, if you look at the dot-com boom and bust, there were so many of the same issues back then. So much money invested, lots of money lost, lots of projects failing. And then you also have the CEO of eToro. He says, you have something that you've never had before, not even in the dot-com bubble. If you have a genius idea now and you put a white paper on it and suddenly you have 100,000 millionaires reading it and saying, hmm, that looks like a good idea. Well, if 1,000 put in $10,000, which really isn't a lot for these guys, right? You just raised $10 million for your ICO. This type of scale has never happened before. It's never existed. We've never had this type of fundraising. It's astronomical, the amount of money that's being raised, billions and billions of dollars being raised in these ICOs. What is the project though? What are they doing? What are you buying into, right? These are all questions you have to ask yourself. So then you also have Lubin saying, this technology is so profound, it's gonna do so many amazing things for economic, social, and political systems worldwide. I think this is why you and I are here. We do see the potential in it. And he gives some examples. Tesla made 2,000%. Facebook made 1,000%. Google made 1,000%. This is the same thing, but earlier in the cycle. Now, I want to kind of point something out. We have had golden golden nuggets, gems, diamonds, whatever you want to call them. I mean, people complain about the current price of NEO. So NEO, at the time of making this video, is... Actually, let's look at it right now. At the time of making this video, NEO is currently at $38, all right? Now, it had seen an alt, and I'm doing this in dollars, I understand Satoshi, but I'm just doing it just so to make it easier for most people. So you figure it had hit an all-time high of 100, roughly $161. And now everybody's saying, oh, well, it's now down to $38. Like, this is, a, this is crap. Sure, but if you remember, NEO used to be Ant Shares. Ant Shares had an ICO. The AntShares ICO was selling NEO for roughly 0 0.03 something cents, okay? So given that time, even though NEO has taken a massive hit since its all-time high, you still have a 1,000x gain on NEO had you gotten into NEO earlier. And it's not like there wasn't a lot of time to do it, guys. Basically, from September all the way to early June, I mean, look at this project. It just sat there with no activity whatsoever. This allowed for natural price discovery, which is something that we're not seeing in current ICOs. Let's just look at some ICOs that have come out recently, okay? And I'm not picking on any of these. I'm not, some of these I've, I've purchased myself. Listen, I'm being realistic with you. These are just things you have to talk about. So, well, what do we have? Quark Chain. Quark Chain was one of the most hyped projects you could hear of. They were gonna be almost like the Zillica killer or something like that, right? Well. Look what happened to this. Price came out, pumped all the way up to 34 cents, and we've literally seen a steady decline ever since then, okay? You have Iotex, had this insane pump when it got listed on Binance, and we've seen a, de a decline ever since then, all right? Let's take some other projects. Zebby, Zebby came out, right? Initial pump, boom, straight down, guys, straight down. P-Chain as well. Had this, well, P Chain really didn't even have a pump yet. It kind of came up here and then also came down as. But the thing with these projects, though, like for example, even with P Chain, you know, you know Jeff Cow and all that, you know, he has a lot of connections, and he, I don't know. We have to see what's going to happen with these projects. But let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's let's pick more projects. Cortex, Cortex had that initial pump, right? Came all the way up. $2.39, and now we're sitting all the way back down at $0.76. Cents. Let's pick an even more popular one. Let's pick one that everybody was talking about back in the day. WanChain, right? WanChain was going to be the craziest ICO of all time, right? Well, debuted at around $4, which means anyone that bought it when it came out, you're down. Even if you bought down in this dip, this this low, look at this lower dip right here. So you had... $2.92, which is what we're sitting at right now. So basically, Chain is the lowest that it's ever been right now. And think about all this hype that, that went into the project over that time. I mean, guys, I don't want to like be that guy, but I had a video 
that I put out and it was Wanchain, don't buy the hype. And I wasn't saying I didn't like Wanchain. I actually say in the video, I like Wanchain a lot. But I explained to people what happens when you rush in and you buy these tokens instantly, directly when they come out. I had loads of hate. It's probably one of my most disliked videos of all time. I had people telling me I was crazy, people giving me thumbs down. I had over 36,000 views on this video. Well, look, and I literally called the price. I said it's probably gonna go up to about $10, and then it's probably gonna retrace all the way back down to three, four dollars. It literally hit an all-time high of 971. Now, I'm not trying to say that I'm some kind of Nostradamus or anything like that, I'm not. But I'm simply trying to point out to you how these patterns repeat themselves over and over and over again. You even have the EOS mainnet experiencing a freeze two days after launch. This is a $4 billion ICO. You have phenomenal leadership and development from a guy like Dan Larimer, and we're having problems with EOS. So these ICOs, all of these startups, nobody knows what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. It's all speculation. Most of them don't even have MVPs by the time they come out. The test net is four months down the road. The, the, the main net is next year, quarter four, right? So you have to really look at what it is that you're buying. And if you're looking for quick flips, I don't know that the ICO markets are really the places to do that anymore unless you're the guys getting in at the super early investment round. You're seeing so many projects trading at marginal costs or even below the public round for the ICO. I mean, look at this right here. Take this for example. You have the Phantom. The, uh, this is a tweet from ICO Drops. So Phantom, all right? The winning transaction in gas wars, 580,000 GUE, which essentially makes this transaction cost over 43 ETH, which is translated into 24,000 US dollars. This makes it 5.8 times of the winning 100,000 uh, GUE from Zebi. This is insane. Why are we competing over this? This is just sick. Look at this. Let me just break this down as well. So, I, and I'm, this has nothing to do with Phantom. This has nothing to do with the project, nothing to do with the tech. This has 100% to do with the money, 100% to do with the ICO. This ICO, they raised, I believe, I don't have the exact numbers right here, but essentially what that, well, they just ended, so they changed it. But the last time that I had looked at it, there was only $2 million left. Or let me just break, let me not, let me forget numbers. Let's talk percentages. Over 90% of all the tokens had already been secured in private rounds. I think it was even higher than that, like 98% or some crazy number. Don't quote me on it, but it was insanely high. So basically, you have all of these private investors, VCs, everyone that got in before the ICO, which was an ungodly amount. And there was this much left for the average investor to get in on. So what is the what is the what are they trying to do? Well, uh, let's see. Maybe when it hits exchanges, nobody was able to get in, so we're all gonna buy up this coin, right? We're all gonna buy up the 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 the, the coin because we couldn't get involved in it. But think about what you would be contributing to if you bought into that. You're pumping, basically, a private VC invested type coin. And I don't know who I'm gonna offend by saying this, but that's not fair at all to the average individual. And when you see things like this continue to come out, you're, you're, you're basically going to just see people just get completely discouraged. And the ICOs could potentially ruin the space. Just a possibility. And not to mention that you've seen what these ICOs have done. And then the question is, what are they doing with the Ethereum? I mean, that's, that's, that's a whole nother discussion, a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But you give them Ethereum, they give you tokens. Tokens crash, they sell the Ethereum. So that's basically that. Now, I did want to talk about a chart that Crypto Ran posted on uh, Twitter. This is not new, okay? But I wanted to just kind of revisit this. So he says, this is the Amazon chart during its first years of trading, having a 95% retracement. Some people sold it at $5. Now it's worth $1,500 or yes. So that's a 29 thousand nine hundred percent increase don't be the guy who did the same with bitcoin there is no easy way so as you can see this chart looks a lot like the bitcoin chart right now not exactly but there are similarities with the you know the insane speculation and then the pullback now here is the thing here is what i have to say this is what i want to chime in on this 
The difference is, is when you speak of something like Amazon, okay, what Amazon did was insane. The value that Amazon brought to the public, brought to the average user, brought to the regular everyday Joe was incredible. They started out as basically an online bookstore and now they are the largest retail store on the planet and they don't even well actually they have started opening a few stores but they really brought something to the masses they 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 do the free 2 day shipping they have basically everything you know with the Amazon Prime then they're talking about doing drone airdrops in the future having uh Amazon stores where you could basically walk in and buy things and there won't be anybody in the stores i mean these guys are doing amazing things i don't want to go into detail all about Amazon but even with Netflix we always talk about what separated Netflix from Blockbuster so when you're looking into projects to invest in there this is not financial advice there might be hype okay but when I look into projects when I think about long-term lasting value I think about projects like Neo I do I think about Neo Neo's reshaping itself you have to look at some of the things they've been doing lately incredible technology which I, I actually have been meaning to do a Neo update video because there's been a lot of really awesome news that's come out. I don't know if today is the day to really drop all that news, but you look at it, and even if they say, well, I don't know about the transactions on this blockchain, it may not be enough. It still is an excellent incubator platform. It's still a great place to store digital assets, regardless, right? And the NEO ecosystem and the community that's involved in them is so robust, the network effect. We spoke about Nano. Nano's the perfect cryptocurrency, right? In theory. Why is Bitcoin still number one? Network effect. More people use it. We need to buy it to get in to trade, right? The miners, they've been around for a long time. The network effect. You look at these other projects like Ontology. Ontology is an amazing project, guys. You have to look at what they're doing. They're creating that layer of trust. They're allowing these enterprises to basically find a way into the blockchain. They don't care. These guys don't care. They don't care about tech. They just want to know, is it faster? Is it cheaper? Is it more secure? Okay? Can we trust? Can we trust these blockchains? This is where ontology comes in. Ontology. And another thing too, uh, let, me, let me actually back this up a little bit. When we speak about token utility, right? Token utility on the blockchain. Okay, how many projects come out and they're like, oh yeah, well, uh, and I ask this in all my interviews. I always go, well, what's the utility of your token? What, what is it? What, what's the purpose of it? A lot of times, well, you know, we're going to use it to power the ecosystem. It's going to be used internally for transactional purposes, Okay, but the, here's the thing. Why don't we just use Ethereum? You know what I'm saying? Why don't we just use Bitcoin if you're going to pay for things? So I would like to see a system in which you, you, you spend, but you can also earn. Well, NEO rewards you in NEO gas for being a holder. Ontology rewards you in Ontology gas for being a holder. Let's go into another one of my, one of my favorite projects, Elastos. Elastos is something that also creates incentives as well. Even Bitcoin, what's the incentive? Well, originally, and it still is, was to become a miner, right? Back when people used to mine on their computers, when there was no competition whatsoever. The incentive for keeping the system online was you get rewarded. So you need some sort of a reward system. There has to be some kind of a overall gigantic ecosystem to this whole thing. And that's exactly what Elastos is doing as well. They're doing the merge mining with Bitcoin. You're seeing Jihan Wu from Bitmain saying he's going to switch 50% of the hash power over to Elastos as well. So these are projects you want to look into, okay? What's their incentive? Here's an interesting thing. Crypto Kitties. Um, excuse me, not Crypto Kitties. Crypto Zombies. Not me, but you know, the app that basically tells you guys how to code on Ethereum. Here's a very, very interesting concept that I wanted to bring up. So basically, these guys are looking, instead of doing an ICO, they're looking to do Kickstarter. They're going to raise $250,000 using its crowdfunding for 60 days, and they're using Kickstarter. So they're not even doing an ICO, okay? This is, this is a project that's basically saying, you know what, let's, let's just make it more transparent because this, this ICO realm is just getting out of control. 
And another thing, when I was speaking about the incentives, right? Here's something very interesting to consider. I wanted to bring this up. Now, this isn't like any type of a FUD article or anything of that nature. I just want to kind of move away from my initial topic and start talking about some other things. Look at the cost of mining Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is currently, I think, around 6400 6500 at the time of this video. So look at some of these uh, prices. So Albania, 3800 3, There's profits, all right? But imagine if you're trying to mine Bitcoin in Belgium. They're saying the average price in Belgium to mine one Bitcoin is $13,482. So that means that you're going to be mining Bitcoin at a loss. Look at South Korea, $26,170 to mine one Bitcoin. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the Bitcoin difficulty rate just literally exponentially ladders constantly because of so many people coming into the space, so many people wanting to mine it as well. In fact, if I switch this to the all time yeah look at that guys uh you can't even actually see that because i'm in the way okay get out of the way can you guys can you guys even see that so anyway so that's ridiculous and what's gonna happen they call it what is it called the chain death or something like that when bitcoin actually starts to spiral or something like that or something so basically that was something i just wanted to just just note as well um it's interesting to see what these what these prices are going to have you're probably going to see a lot of miners potentially drop off or just hodl i don't know uh would they be willing to mine at a loss that is something that i'm very very interested in finding out however don't forget Bitcoin does have this kind of fail safe mechanism where if the miners do decide to drop off, uh, it's like every two weeks, the difficulty will adjust and then it, you'll get a, a higher reward. So it kind of does have this fail safe mechanism built into it, which is really incredible when you think about that. So let's talk about some other news really quick. So we did have the official statement coming out of Icon. So there was a little bit of a difficulty with the swaps happening to the main net. They said, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. All the ERC-20 tokens are totally safe. In fact, this was something that we had seen very similar with uh, eDrash or YGG Drash. I don't know how to pronounce it. So basically, it was it's not anything that's a crazy malicious, don't worry about it. Your Icon tokens are safe if you're holding ICX. I also want to talk about Elastos. They're going to be ha having their Hack Summit 2018. So this is for developers, July 16th and 18th, 6th through the 8th. You can register now if you're interested. Also, you have the NKN uh, testnet demo is, is, is running right now if you guys want to have a look at it. So that was really good news as well. NKN is actually one of those projects that I personally have been really interested in. I do look at their connections with these other projects. You have Unobo Lee, okay? Yonobo Lee, Jun Lee from Ontology, Dahang Fei from Neo, OnChain. You might want to look at this. You might want to look at this trifecta, guys. So that's an interesting project. I'm, I, the only thing I don't like about it is it's only available on basically Gate.io, and Switchio Network has thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of transactions, which is basically a joke at this point. So yeah, I guess uh, I guess I'm not picking up any of that anytime soon. So also let's talk about news really quick. So you have the CBOE president saying that Ethereum is not a security, and this is going to pave way potentially for Ether futures. Is this a good thing? I don't know, guys. We want this institutional money to come in, but as it's been coming in, what has it been doing? Well, it's either been buying over the counter, it's been getting into these pre-sales, or it's not been getting in whatsoever and simply just utilizing futures. And look at what the futures did. As soon as the futures markets executed, boom, Bitcoin fell. And here you go. Toxic, the toxic suspected manip manipulation sees Bitcoin futures sink 55% in 2018. So with all the tether and, and all this garbage that's been going on, you've basically seen people just uh, starting to short the market again. So that's not really that great of news. We do have Ripple getting a bad review from Western Union. Yeah, so if Western Union would do more than just 10 transactions, maybe they would, you know, as far as... Uh, X Rapid is concerned, they could probably see what it would do, you know, value proposition wise, but obviously Western Union, they're just going to continue to do what they want. You also have Jim Cramer saying that banks are being pressured by cryptocurrencies. He says, um, there are plenty of young, younger portfolio managers who think the banks are like Sears and JCPenney. They're old, like they're old line brick and mortar stores that are about to lose their relevance. Um, he says the only way that he can explain the mediocre performance of banking stocks, even with the announcement of the Federal Reserve, is that these stocks could be facing pressure from new payment technologies such as pay, uh, PayPal, Venmo, and of course, cryptocurrencies. You also have, uh, so Ted Rogers 
from Zappo saying, now Zappo is the leading Bitcoin cold storage. They hold roughly $10 billion in Bitcoin. So basically, he says it's not a question of if, but when Bitcoin becomes a global reserve asset. And finally, in a bit of funny news, we have a film coming out entitled Crypto. So it's basically going to be Hollywood's first real big movie based on crypto. It's going to star Kurt Russell, Alexis Bledel, uh, Jeremy Harris, Luke Hemsworth, and a whole bunch of others. And they're calling it a thriller in the vein of The Firm or The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. But what I find interesting is that the movie is essentially going to be about a young anti-money laundering agent. So, of course, the first Bitcoin movie we get, we're going to go right into the criminal money laundering activity. So, what are you going to do about that sentiment, guys? So, like I said, you know, taking my own advice, I went outside yesterday. I visited Storm King Art Center. I rode a bike I got away from crypto for a little bit. I encourage all of you to take that time as well. Today is Father's Day. Go enjoy. You know, don't be stuck inside. Don't be doing what I'm doing right now. And um, I also wanted to say that, you know, I did just push, put, post this question. And I, I said, as a content creator, it's extremely important to provide my audience with as much value as possible. Given this recent prolonged bear market and current sentiment, what type of content would you be most interested in seeing more of? No poll, just an open discussion. I posted this just before the video on Twitter, and I want your input. What is it that you guys would like to see more of? You guys know that I'm here for you. I want to support you guys as much as you support me. And I'm very interested in what content you guys are interested in seeing. I do know that right now, you're kind of seeing people like, please, no more ICOs. And I get it, guys. So my question to you is, what is it that you guys would like me to do more of? What, what, what content would you find most valuable for you as the content consumer, I suppose, at this point? So please let me know. I'd be more than interested to hear everything that you guys have to say. That being said, guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming back to my channel. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Did I say that I love you guys? Because I definitely love you guys. You're awesome. And until next time, stay crypto and peace out.